During AMD's CES announcements, we were already on the floor getting hands-on with brand new AMD Ryzen 4000 series laptops. Asus was our first stop for this. The Asus ROG G14 Zephyrus laptop is a Ryzen 4000 notebook. It's the first one we saw that ranges from $1,500 to $2,000. It's got a top-end SKU, including the new 8-core 16-thread Ryzen 7 4800H CPU and options for a 1660 Ti or RTX 2060. And today we're going to be recapping the Zephyrus laptop and also some of the AMD CPUs and new GPUs that are out for portable devices. Before that, this video is brought to you by Linode Cloud Computing. We've trusted Linode as our web host since 2012 and recommend it for excellent technical and customer support, reliable uptime, and a clean interface. Aside from cloud hosting, Linode.com recently added GPU hosting plans for machine learning and neural net use, built with RTX 6000 GPUs and 10 gigabit per second network speeds. They're also starting to deploy Epic CPUs in their servers. Sign up for Linode.com Cloud Computing with code GNEXUS20 for a $20 credit or click the link in the description below to visit Linode.com slash GamersNexus. So AMD had a lot of announcements for the pre-CES keynote that they did or press conference that they did. We're going to be breaking it up into different pieces to focus on each of the individual elements in more depth. We have meetings with AMD on a portable, discrete GPU, discrete CPU, and I think we're talking display a little bit too. And we already met with ASUS, which we're covering the G14 in this video, along with some of the Ryzen notebook components and uh, the Vega graphics components that are coming in with those as well. And then we'll have follow-up coverage for individual GPU and uh, desktop Threadripper parts, stuff like that. So check back for those. The plan is to talk to AMD, get a lot more detail, and maybe speak with some of the people on the product management engineering side and see if we can add some more depth to the initial news discussion for the press conference. So on the notebook side, the first Ryzen 4000 laptops are at the show already. We did get hands-on with the Zephyrus. It's a small 14-inch form factor notebook. We, uh, we did get to see one with the highest end SKU. The new 4000 series CPUs are Zen 2 parts. The new APUs that were announced are Zen Plus parts. And then the GPU solutions, just to be, get this out of the way and be really clear straight uh, at the gate, there are no Navi APUs at all on market right now, nor have there been any that were announced to be on market. So any of the APUs, it's all Vega architecture. It's been refined a bit from our understanding, but not Navi yet, even though it's still seven nanometer process. The Asus G14 laptop will include most the Ryzen 4000 CPU SKUs, but the one on display had the 4800H CPU. Asus also claimed that it will have exclusive access to the 35 watt part for an unknown period of time, as opposed to the higher 45 watt parts. Allegedly, the 35 part doesn't perform all that differently from 45 watts. Specifically, what we were told was that it doesn't perform differently, but we'll have to validate that separately. That said, if the TDP rating is the same as normally, that could mean just that the thermal resistance of the cooler is different. Uh, theta CA could change in the formula, which would thereby change the TDP figure. In either case, ASUS will have early access to the 35 watt part. Externally, the G14 is a smaller 14 inch form factor notebook with a display that Seems like a big FU to the glowing Apple logo on the back of their laptops. The Ryzen 4000 G14 notebooks will be available with and without these programmable LEDs. Asus is calling it Anime Matrix or something as an animation, not as an waifu. But those which include it can be set to, although that'd probably sell a whole lot better if it were waifu notebooks. Those which include it can be set to varying gamma and patterns, mostly comprised of pixel art that can scroll or flash. Given that this is a laptop, the first question was about power consumption. Asus noted that it's about 1,000 LEDs on the notebooks and that they consume between 2 to 4 watts for the, the whole display on the backside of it on average, or 8 watts when the LEDs are mostly maxed out to brighter settings and all on. Although this is mostly a functionless attention grabber for the back of the laptop, Asus did have it set up with a mock DJ station, not fit for a proper DJ like our friend DJ Rain, surely. But the point was to illustrate that you could map the LEDs to say things like uh, glowing when the music waveforms peak differently via software. So that's all configurable through software. For charging, the notebook we looked at had power hungry parts in it and 1660 Ti or 2060 RTX card for the GPU solutions. And then again, CPU 4800H was the one we saw. It included a 180 watt power brick in a really small form factor. Unfortunately, we didn't get measurements on that, but we've got some B-roll shots that should give perspective. Alternatively, USB Type-C charging is available up to 65 watts. 
which is not sufficient if you're going to play uh, higher end games on it. But where we would see that value is, for example, you're on a plane to Taiwan from the US and then you're dealing with limited power output afforded to you by the plane. So for travelers, it makes a lot of sense. 65 watts is enough to keep it going, even charge a little bit if you're doing something like word processing or web browsing, and that's about it. So that's useful in those instances, but otherwise 180 watt brick with it. And other CPUs included can run lower power. The Asus uh, options will have a, a six core and a 12 thread CPU. And the also has a four core four thread. This might've been a, an error, but at Asus we were to told that they would have a four core eight thread, uh, not presently aware if that's a configuration that can exist, but that's what, I don't know, it sounds like 6 and 12, uh, 8 and 16, and then maybe 4 and 4 is really the answer. Memory will be taken care of by a soldered 16 gigabyte solution, but there's also going to be a dim, at least one dim slot from our understanding available for expansion. The soldered solution is dual channel, so that would actually be pretty relevant for this, especially the APU aspect. If you're using the APU, that does have integrated GPU in it. The included memory is 3200 megahertz, unspecified timings for that. And we weren't allowed to take the demo unit apart, unfortunately, but there are two small vents at the top towards the screen. And then on the underside, really small ventilation, but low power parts. And we don't, I have no idea what the cooling solution is under it because Asus wouldn't show us or tell us, which is a bit annoying since that's the point of being at a trade show. But I guess we'll look at that later. Beyond that, we couldn't get any information on the cooling solution. For the display, there's a few options. They're all 14 inch. There's a 1080p option that is up to 120 hertz. Uh, both displays are Pantone validated. They are less focused on gaming and more focused on color accuracy, which is probably more appropriate for professional market. They are free sync enabled. And there's also a 1440p panel, both at 60 hertz. Asus calls these IPS level panels. And um, we're seeking confirmation on what precisely that means if it's not quite IPS or what, what that phrasing means. Laptops weigh about uh, 1.7 kilograms. And then for the AMD CPUs, just separately talking about the mobile CPU, portable CPUs, there's a lot of SKUs to go through, but we can do it pretty quickly. Getting to the specs, AMD has CPUs listed already as the R7-4800H at 8-core 16-thread, 2.9 gigahertz base, 4.2 boost, followed by a 6-core 12-thread R5-4600H at 3 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz boost, both of these are 45 watt options, although there are supposedly 35 watt variants, again, exclusive to ASUS for some period of time. And ASUS uh, seems to indicate that they should have similar or the same performance, but we haven't tested them. The R7 4800U and 4700U are lower power options. That's what the U signifies and start at 1.8 gigahertz and two gigahertz base respectively with 15 watt rated TDPs. 4800U is an eight core 16 thread option. 4700U is eight core eight thread. The R5 4600U and 4500U are also 15 watt parts. The former is six core 12 thread, the latter six core six thread with base clocks at 2.1 and 2.3 gigahertz, maxing out at 4.0 for boost. And then finally, the R3 4300U is a four core four thread part at 2.7 gigahertz base and 3.7 gigahertz boost. So those are all TSMC seven nanometer FinFET devices. And uh, the integrated graphics components are Vega. So they're there, but Asus in this instance has opted to include GPUs, $1,500 for the base model, $2,000 the model we saw at the show. And then for 4800H, that's the highest end that runs four megabytes L2 and eight megabytes of L3. Curiously, AMD didn't use the phrasing gamer cache this time or game cache. So it sounds like that's fortunately dead, but it's back to L3, four megabytes and eight. Uh, then there's a TJ Maxx, which is kind of interesting, of 105 degrees Celsius. The manufacturers of the notebooks can, uh, just like motherboards, can go in and change where they want it to, to uh, max out and thermal protect if they need an earlier shutdown. And then each CPU also includes AMD uh, Vega IGPs, no Navi again, just to really be clear about that because I saw some comments online that didn't seem to quite understand that yet. As for other mobile devices, Andy also had an RX 5700M. There's a 5600M going with the 5600 XT desktop announcement that we'll talk about in more depth in a separate video after meeting with Andy. And then there's a 5500M and a 5300M, all of which are Navi and they're discrete solutions. They're, they're 
GPUs for notebooks. The 5700M is a 36 CU part. It's got eight gigabytes of GDDR6, 5600M, 36 CU part. It's got reduced memory bandwidth and is a 192-bit interface instead of 256-bit. It's six gigabytes of also G6. 5500M and 5300M are both 22 CU parts. And the 5500M is four gigabytes, 5300M is three gigabytes. And then finally, AMD also announced Athlon mobile processors with Vega graphics as well. These are extremely low end, probably not super interesting to our audience, but there's a 3150U Athlon Gold, and that's two core, four thread. And then there's a 3050U Silver at two core, two thread. So that'll recap the AMD mobile stuff. We are going to be visiting a, a couple more companies at the show who might have laptops, so we can hopefully show some of those if there's interest expressed in this video. And then, like I said, check back for additional information on the discrete components. So there'll be the new Threadripper CPU and uh, discrete GPU solutions like the 5600 XT, where we're meeting with AMD to talk in hopefully a lot more detail. So subscribe for all that. Otherwise, go to store.gamersnexus.net to buy a shirt like this one or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.